how Martha saved her parents from green beans probably has its uh, roots in the fact that I was a very picky eater as a child. And I remember having to sit at the table for a long time to eat uh, like six pieces of ham before I could leave. That was the food that I did not like to eat. Um, green beans were fine, but not ham. Um, so I wanted to write a story about a, a child who was forced to eat a food that she didn't particularly care uh, for. But um, I like the fact that at the end of the story, um, she no longer has to eat that food. So I didn't want it to be a story that teaches a child, here's a food that's going to be good for you and you're going to learn to like it. So in the end, both the parents and the child kind of end up as the winner. Um, and with that book, with the wonderful illustrations by Mark Fearing, I had uh, virtually no input into the artwork. Um, as is so often the case with picture books, the author and the illustrator are kept separate from each other. And Mark created all these wonderful images on his own. Um, I got to see some of the sketches, and I had very few uh, comments or uh, things that I was concerned about. And then when I saw the final artwork, I just loved, loved the way he, he created it, especially the green beans. Um, the, the expressions on their faces, um, every time I look at the book, I find new details that they're doing in there, whether it's um, the beans dancing, the YMCA dance in the background, or doing hieroglyphics on the back of the cave wall. So just a, a wonderful, happy um, result there. And as an author, um, my fingers are just always crossed because so much depends on the illustrations for a picture book, just hoping that my author, the illustrator, will do a good job. And I could not have been more pleased with, with Mark's great drawings for that. Um, for uh, the book Moo, which is coming, uh, which will be out this fall, for Moo, um, it was a book that I originally wanted to illustrate myself. It's a one-word book. So uh, to illustrate, to have somebody interested in that book, I had to do an illustrated dummy. I couldn't just send a list of moves to my editor and hope he would understand what I was talking about. So I did uh, an illustrated dummy, um, hoping that I could be the illustrator. And while I was waiting to find out from the editor if they were interested in it, um, I received in the mail a postcard from a friend who was advertising uh, his art show coming up. And on the postcard was a picture of a cow. And when I saw that cow, I thought, that is the way the cow should look in this book. And I know that editors don't want to have an author and illustrator kind of present a package together, but, but oh, Boy, I, I, I want Mike to be the illustrator. I couldn't draw a cow as good as that. That's just the perfect personality. So I uh, approached my friend Mike Winuka to see if he would even be interested in doing this. And Mike agreed to it, and we presented uh, the package to a, an editor, and right away they said yes. And even though it was very hard for me to give up the fact that I wanted to illustrate the book, now that I've seen Mike's final illustrations, I, I couldn't picture it any way else. Uh, he captured the story so, so well. So I'm um, extremely pleased that Mike Winutka is the, the illustrator for this book. And add to that that he's a friend of mine, because usually I've never even meet these illustrators. So to have a book coming out with a, a person who's a good friend is just a, a double treat, a joy there. Um, and then finally, for Arlo's Outrageous Adventure, after having uh, worked as either an author and illustrator for 25 years, I finally get to do both parts for the same book. Um, and as I was working on the illustrations for this book, my respect for people like Mike Winuka just grew and grew and grew um, that uh, all the work that he does to make his pictures look so, so beautiful. Um, was a high standard to live up to, and I'm hoping that I just didn't embarrass myself with my illustrations. So uh, I hope that I didn't. And it will have, it's a flat interactive book. It is. It's about a boy who is dragged to the museum against his will, um, and he ends up having a much better time than he expected. And as he goes through the art museum, all of the, the pictures in the museum come to life. They're, they're flaps. So you would open up the different pieces of artwork, and as the book progresses, more and more of the artwork comes alive. And the artwork interacts with each other and then interacts with the boy as well, too. Um, so it, 
involved a lot of precise measuring, which might isn't my strongest forte, but I got very good at using a ruler to make sure all these flaps and artworks lined up just exactly right. And the, the printer did an excellent job, the publisher, of, of making sure all the, the artwork lined up just so. And I'm sure it was a huge headache for their part, um, but, but they did a great job with that. And I'm very excited to see the, the first book that, that I've got to be both author and illustrator come out.